हेलो स्टूडेंट्स टुडे इन दिस लेक्चर वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ फीड मैकेनिज्म सो टू अंडरस्टैंड डिफरेंट फीड मैकेनिज्म फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लेट अस अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ फीड सो द फीड इज नथिंग बट द रिलेटिव मूवमेंट ऑफ द टूल विथ वर्क पीस इज कॉल्ड एज द फीड and there are different variations or types of movements are available for the tool that movement may be first one is it may be a longitudinal movement it may be a crosswise movement or it may be a angular movement so there are different variations of movement required for different machining operations to be performed on the workpiece so the first one that is the longitudinal movement is given to the workpiece or the longitudinal movement is given to the tool by using the carriage another one that is the crosswise movement or the movement perpendicular to the workpiece is given to the tool by using the cross slide or the feed screw similarly the angular movement to the workpiece is given by using the another important part that we have discussed that is the swelling plant that is attached to the compound rest screw so there are three different movements most important first one is the longitudinal movement second one is crosswise movement and the third one is the angular movement and there are three different parts are available to obtain these three different movements and provide this movement to the tool and all these different movements can also be obtained automatically by using different mechanisms because in our previous lectures we have discussed that these different movements are given to the tool by using the different types of wheels or by using the hand but these all movements can be given automatically to the tool also by using different types of mechanism and that all mechanisms are nothing but the feed mechanisms so the different types of feed mechanisms available are the first one is the tumbler gear mechanism second one is feed gear box third one that is the feed rod and the lid screw and the fourth one is the apron mechanism so from all these four the first one that is the tumbler gear mechanism and the last one that is the apron mechanism these are the main two most important mechanisms which are helpful to provide automated movement to the tool for machining operation now let us understand the first one that is the tumbler gear mechanism so first of all what is tumbler gear mechanism and where this particular mechanism is available in the lathe machine so for this have a look at this particular figure and here take a look at this particular portion so this entire section shown over here that is nothing but the head stock and at the end of the head stock or behind of that particular head stock this entire gear assembly is available and this available gear assembly is nothing but the tumbler gear mechanism so this tumbler gear mechanism is available at the back end of the head stock now to understand how this mechanism operates let us have a look at different types of gears available in this particular machine so here from this particular portion this section is nothing but the end of the spindle so as we know power is transmitted to the spindle and spindle is connected to the workpiece and that is a workpiece is revolving about its axis so here at the end of this spindle one gear is attached and this gear is also rotating with the movement or with the rotation of the motor provided at that particular point so in normal condition below all gears are in disengaged condition during normal machining operation there is no connection between the end gear available over here and the below available gears and that's why it is normally automatically rotating and there is no movement in below available gears so now let us 
draw the simple 2d figure of these all gears and show the connections how this particular mechanism rotates and how the motion is transmitted from the spindle portion to the final available sections so for that let us have a look at this simple 2D figure of the tumbler gear mechanism and we will give the name to these all particular different gears. So the first one that is let us say is this is the gear A. So this is the gear A. Similarly at this point two gears are available gear B and gear C. So these are the gear B and gear C. Here one lever is provided for engagement and disengagement purpose. Similarly here lever is provided. Similarly as you can see at the back end another gear is available and this gear is called as gear D. And as there are two gears are available on the same shaft so the another outer gear let us name it as gear E. So here outer gear that is the gear E. With this outer gear E, another gear is connected and let us give it name as gear F. So overall, this is the gear F. Similarly, at this end portion, the last gear connected to the F, that is gear G. So this gear, let us name it as gear G. And this gear G is connected to the lead screw or maybe feed rod. So the rotation of gear G automatically result into the automatic rotation of the lead screw or the feed rod. So from main spindle portion to the lead screw or the feed rod the automated movement is given using this all entire gear assembly. Here these two engaged disengaged gear B and gear C are useful for engaging and disengaging engaging condition and that's why this gear B and C these two gears are called as the tumbler gears. So this gear B and C are useful that's why these are called as the tumbler gear and this entire mechanism is called as the tumbler gear mechanism. So how this motion is transmitted so for that let us have a look over this portion here as we say as the rotation of the workpiece is given in clockwise direction that means when the gear A which is connected in the clockwise direction as it rotates in the clockwise direction this entire movement or rotation result into the clockwise movement and this clockwise moment result into the movement of the workpiece in clockwise direction. But here as you can see this gear B and gear C are in disengaged condition that means the motion from gear A cannot be transmitted to the below available gears. So for to transmit the motion this lever is shifted in downward direction which result into the connection of gear B to the gear A. And that is how the another connection is obtained between all this gear which is shown in this particular figure. So again let us name it. This is the gear A. Now after applying the lever what happens this gear B connects the gear A and the gear C. The another gear that is the gear D, E, F and G. Now again let us say if the gear A is rotating in clockwise direction so this gear B starts rotating in anti-clockwise direction again B and C are connected that means this gear C rotates in clockwise direction as gear C rotates in clockwise direction gear D rotates in anti-clockwise direction and gear D and gear E both are available on the same shaft that means that both are rotate in the similar direction that means gear E will also rotate in anti-clockwise direction. Now gear E and F are connected that means gear F will rotate in clockwise direction and as F rotate in clockwise direction this gear G will rotate in anti-clockwise direction that means this last gear 
will rotate in anti clockwise direction and with this last gear lead screw or feed rod both are connected that means this anti clockwise movement of this particular last gear result into the automated movement of the carriage from the head stock towards the tail stock direction so the movement of the carriage from head stock to the tail stock direction automatically is obtained by connecting this particular tumbler gears with the main gear connected to the spindle so if we see from here if the connection is like that a b c d e f and g at that time what happens head stock towards the tail stock direction carriage movement happens but when if the connection is reverses that means if c and b are connected and in this particular portion what happens the final movement or the direction of the movement reverses so that is how the movement of the carriage from head stock towards the tail stock or tail stock towards the head stock automatically obtained by using this tumbler gear mechanism so this tumbler gear mechanism is helpful to provide automated movement of the tool during machining operation so i hope you got the clarity about how this particular tumbler gear mechanism operates now other than this different parts available at the headstock sections are the first one that is the feed gear box so this feed gear box is helpful or it is useful to obtain a different speed variation during machining operation and it is also called as the quick change gear box now the main operation of these feed gear box is to provide the variation in the speed during the thread cutting operation now the next one that is the feed rod and this feed rod is the long shaft which is useful to provide the automated movement or the transfer the movement to the tool using the carrying carriage cross slide section so here as you can read from this particular section this feed rod is a long shaft which is used to move the carriage or cross slide for operations such as turning boring facing etc but this feed rod is not helpful for thread cutting operation for thread cutting operation lead screw is used and here the power is transmitted from the lead spindle to the apron gears and through a feed rod and number of gears now the next one that is the lead screw this lead screw is a threaded rod and it is used as a master screw and is only required or is only helpful during the thread cutting operation other than thread cutting operation this particular lead screw remains in the disengaged condition so these are the different important parts available for the feed movement or the feed provision of the tool during machining operation so in this lecture we have discussed about the major important feed mechanism that is the tumbler gear mechanism and what is the meaning of feed that you need to keep it mind because this is the most important parameter to understand what is the meaning of the feed again i am repeating feed is nothing but the relative movement of the tool towards the workpiece so i hope you got the clarity about the different feed mechanism and what are the meaning of the different parts that we have discussed in this particular lecture so looking forward to see you all in our next lecture up to then thank you